morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone's Oz and here is your latest forecast update for April 11th, 2025. A lot to get through today, starting things off up in the north where we do have a developing tropical low now drawing in moisture from the Gulf of Carpentaria and over the Cape York Peninsula. This is expected to become our next tropical cyclone and it is expected to do so later on this weekend or into early next week offshore from the WA coastline. We've also got all of that moisture being dragged in as a result of this system here and a developing tropical low also expected to occur over in the Gulf of Carpentaria which could result in even more moisture for already saturated communities in far north Queensland. Let's talk about the rainfall up there right now. It is a little bit more immediate than the tropical cyclone threat for Western Australia. You can see plenty of rainfall being drawn in from the Coral Sea at this point in time, developing around a bit of a convergent zone that's beginning to take shape here between Cook down down towards Cairns, a little bit further offshore from probably about the Low Isle sort of area. It's outside of the Daintree Rainforest. This is providing plenty of rainfall at this point in time for locations offshore, and it is actually a good thing that this rainfall isn't closer to the coastline, otherwise we would be talking about some very significant rainfall rainfall accumulations being reported this morning. Uh, rainfall accumulations are expected to steadily pick up though throughout the course of today and if you were watching the last couple of videos you'll be able to tell that the rainfall bands are now starting to move a little bit further south. Now the danger is going to be in the firing line for the significant rainfall throughout the remainder of this working week and into this weekend and also in towards early next week and you can see that's in line with what the forecast models are suggesting as well with isolated uh, tending to widespread heavy falls expected to be developing from tonight uh, especially around the Cooktown and the Hopevale area those heavier falls will be apparent tonight and then heavier falls developing through tomorrow afternoon uh, down into the Daintree Rainforest. A couple of showers also streaming in through tomorrow around the uh, Cassowary Coast as well. Nothing significant expected to penetrate inland over towards the Atherton Tablelands. Heavier rainfall continuing through Sunday along the Daintree Rainforest coastline and then you can see through Monday and Tuesday showers are going to be widespread through the Daintree and then down into the Cassowary Coast before they clear out through Tuesday and Wednesday by the looks of things. Later on into the forecast period we do see that other uh, tropical low beginning to develop. This will happen sometime after about the the 18th or the 19th of April, so out towards next weekend. Uh, not this one coming up, so around Easter time. Uh, and then this tropical low looks like it swings over into the Northern Territory side and then uh, heads out towards WA by the looks of things as per what the long range forecast has been suggesting. And in between other major forecast models as well, it's pretty much the same story developing in the Gulf of Carpentaria or its energy developing in the Gulf of Carpentaria before slingshotted out towards the Northern Territory and then further on towards WA uh, later on into the forecast period with something potentially developing in the Coral Sea. At this point in time, it's still a little bit too early to tell exactly what's going to be happening, at least with these forecast models. Interesting stuff, that's for sure. Quite a lot of confusing stuff and a lot of impacts, uh, a lot of uh, factors at play that could have an impact on the weather forecast up in far north Queensland. What we do know is that heavy rainfall is going to be con uh, contracting basically straight exclusively to the Daintree Rainforest from tomorrow afternoon through Sunday and into Monday, and there will be some heavy shower bands streaming ashore in those areas. Rainfall accumulations are looking quite healthy, especially over the next four days you can see rainfall accumulations out towards Monday night looking pretty good up there. Plenty of rainfall expected up around the Cooktown area as well. The majority of that's going to be coming through throughout the remainder of today and you can see the East Mover forecast model. Just one of many forecast models that we can take a look at calling for about 300 millimetres with widespread falls between 100 out to about 200 millimetres over the next uh, four days and you can see those heavy falls also making their way down towards Daintree Village and the Daintree Rainforest in general with expecting about 200 millimetres there. And then falls like I said around the Cassidy Coast not expected to be anything too flash showers don't really pop up there in a heavy fashion they will be apparent through sunday and into monday as well and showers expected to continue through tuesday and wednesday into next week but should clear by easter depending on the movement and development of tropical lows in and around the queensland waters so you can see only about 50 millimeters on the forecast there which means that the wettest of locations i doubt there'll be more than 100 millimeters in the rain gauges over the next half a week or so considering the rainfall is going to be coming out of the southeast as well the arab peninsula is going to do a good job at blocking that rainfall from cans and as such, Cairns isn't really expecting any meaningful rainfall in the forecast modelling either. So for those in flood impacted areas and flood prone areas through the Herbert River catchment, then through the Johnston, the Tully River catchments as well, and even up towards Cairns and even as far north as Port Douglas by the looks of things, there's no real need to be uh, fretting right now and panicking. The rainfall is pretty much going to be exclusively heavy north of Port Douglas and it will get quite heavy quite quickly and communities such as Daintree Village, Mossman or Ca uh, Cape Tribulation for example will likely be picking up some pretty significant rainfall accumulations as a result. Lightfall is expected to extend down the uh, Queensland coastline as well. You can see between 10 and 25 millimetres expected widespread through the Mackay area with isolated falls up to about 50 millimetres expected through the Sundays through the next couple of days. And the, yeah, like I said, falls are not expected to be too heavy around the Daintree, uh, uh, around areas outside of the Daintree rainforest. That's pretty much where the heavy rainfall is going to be concentrated towards. Um, in terms of the much longer range forecast for North Queensland, you can see the Eastman Earth calling for that tropical load to develop uh, north of the Cape 
York Peninsula before swinging into the Gulf of Carpentaria and developing north of the Northern Territory before another system gets itself going in the Solomon Sea in the northern extremities of the Coral Sea much later on into the forecast period. That looks more like a tropical wave to me, a very broad low pressure system that's going to carry a little bit of tropical energy which could then swing again much later on into the forecast period after the two systems that we've got going on the more immediate forecast into the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria and then come through uh, the last couple of days of April might develop into a weak tropical cyclone over in the Gulf of Carpentaria into the Coral Sea. It's still far too early to tell at this point in time. You can see the GFS calling for a tropical cyclone to develop in the Coral Sea but it remains far enough offshore as to where it's not a problematic system and then other model forecast models just don't go that far out at this point in time. You can see the Icon forecast model calling for a uh, closer to the Gulf of Carpentaria concentrated system and then the access much later on into the forecast period calling for something to be happening in the Solomon Sea. So at this point in time detail is still quite murky on the potential for a tropical uh, low in the Coral Sea or a tropical cyclone in the Coral Sea. We've got three systems coming through in the next five days and uh, in the next, uh, no not in the next five days, rather in the next 15 days uh, and the first system is over in the Northern Territory right now beginning to develop. The next one is expected to develop fairly soon and with about a 20 or 30 percent chance of development somewhere in the Gulf of Carpentaria Carpentaria by around uh, the 15th or the 16th of April and then the next one's going to be happening around Easter time and then there's the better chance of that happening in the Solomon Sea as per the Gulf of Carpentaria at this point in time. A very confusing forecast, it's making my head spin just talking about it right now so I do hope that I haven't left anybody confused but at this point in time it's still a long way out into the future so if you're concerned about the details on this system right now don't be, it's still a long way out for this tropical cyclone uh, to form or tropical low to form, a lot of time still out there for the oceans to decide what's going to be happening so there's no need to be panicking right now we should have some answers by around mid next week what we can expect and in terms of ramifications for far north queensland i'm not seeing any on even the short or the long range forecast at this point in time the rainfall up there right now is completely normal for this time of the year it's not tropical or tropical cyclone deliver, uh, uh, driven and as such rainfall accumulations up there are still, like i said fairly normal at this point in time very difficult to tell what the long range forecast has in store just considering the nature of the forecast and how many tropical lows we're expected to form tropical lows add a lot of uncertainty to the forecast models forecast and a lot of uncertainty to the future just in general. Uh, interesting stuff though and certainly something that's going to be keeping me on my toes and a lot of people up in far north Queensland as well on their toes as well so check back in on about in, a, in uh, about a week or so to see what's going to be happening here Tuesday or Wednesday next week I reckon we'll have some solid answers on what we can expect up in far north Queensland into the much longer range side of things on the forecast. For long winded stuff in north Queensland let's talk about the northern territory now and the developing tropical lows that's developing just towards the west of Bathurst Island and it's really beginning to develop itself quite nicely at this point in time and you can see over the last six hours it's really whacked itself together quite nicely with plenty of convection now swirling around a common low pressure centre and some rainfall now streaming in on the northern side of the system as well and you can really see it take shape on the radar and the satellite imagery if it does choose to load in for me this morning it's always really quick to load in first thing and then it decides to be a little bit more stubborn once I start these recordings but yeah some heavy falls happening around the storm centre and plenty of convection blowing up as a result as well this is a definitely a sign of a developing tropical low slash tropical cyclone at this point in time and it is looking quite healthy that's for sure. Wind observations aren't really that suggestive right now you can see that they are coming out of the west uh, out of the east rather heading towards the west as you would expect across Melville and Bathurst Islands but they're not exactly strong at this point in time and if we do have a tropical low developing at this proximity to the northern territory we generally be expecting some stronger winds up there so this system still definitely has a lot of organising and still quite a ways to go before it develops into a full blown tropical cyclone and it's most likely going to use all of today and then probably about half of this weekend before it develops properly into a tropical cyclone sometime around Saturday night or into Sunday north of the uh, Columbia River in the Kimberley waters or offshore from the Kimberley coastline. It's had a bit of a change in forecast as well by the looks of things. Models are now taking this a lot closer to the Kimberley coastline which means it's likely to recurve a lot uh, closer to the coastline and a lot further north and a lot earlier than what we were initially expecting as well. So you can see coming through about Tuesday and Wednesday the system then begins its turn towards the, the WA coastline, landfalling somewhere between Broome and Derby as per the eastern birth forecast. There are still some major discrepancies between forecast modelling, but it does look like between Wednesday, Thursday and Friday is when we are going to see that recurve towards the WA coastline, wherever this storm is going to end up being. The GFS calling for this recurve to happen a little bit further offshore, and it doesn't properly happen as a recurve, but again, I think the GFS at this point in time is a model that we can write off for this forecast because it has been so unreliable so far, and it isn't looking like it developed 
develops a tropical cyclone as well. And considering the conditions ahead of this system, it is very unlikely that this system fails to develop into a proper tropical cyclone. Even a weak system here, conditions looking very healthy for this tropical cyclone, that's for sure. You can even see the Icon forecast model intensifying it quite quickly through early next week and then recurving it towards uh, the WA coastline through Thursday. And then the long range forecast, just a little bit murky for this system. It is still very hard to tell, especially considering we don't have a properly formed tropical cyclone at this point in time. Generally speaking, the forecast models wait until they have a properly formed tropical cyclone until they all jump on board with each other and what they're expecting. The access calling for that landfill around the Derby sort of area or the Curry Bay sort of area between Thursday and Friday next week. Interesting stuff, but again, a lot of details in this system still need to be ironed out. What does this mean for Western Australia? If you live between Karratha up towards Columbia, it's definitely time to have it in the back of your head that you've got a tropical cyclone on the way. The chances of a landfill at any one location along the coastline are very low single digits at this point in time. The chances do increase once you get up towards the Kimberley region, but it could happen anywhere as far south as Karratha at this point in time. Make sure you've got your cycling kits ready as well, but don't begin preparations until we know exactly where this tropical cyclone is going to be going. If I told everybody to be preparing along the coastline, we'd be talking about preparations uh, underway in Karratha or Port Hedland at this point in time, and there's a very good chance that the tropical cyclone doesn't slide down there. There's also an easily good an e equally rather good chance that this tropical cyclone doesn't go into the Kimberley region. So again, still way too early to tell, but make sure you've got those cycling kits ready to go and you've got the necessary precautions uh, in place uh, already. So again, it's still cycling season, so making sure that the garden is all pruned up and you're ready to go in case a tropical cyclone does bounce on the forecast. If we do get a tropical cyclone landfall for some of these locations whacked onto the forecast up into the Kimberley region, you'll have at least about two or three days to prepare. And if we do see a tropical cyclone going for a bigger population center such as Broome, probably about four days to prepare and up to about six days to prepare if this tropical cyclone does eventually end up going for Karratha or Port Hedland. We'll have some definitive answers on this come around Sunday or Monday when this tropical cyclone does properly form and the forecast models hopefully will be a lot more on board with each other and where they're going to be taking this system. At this point in time, it's still just a little bit too early to tell. Conditions, though, looking very healthy with this tropical cyclone. It's had a very good start to life already and you can see sea temperatures pushing 31 degrees Celsius where the storm is right now. But once it gets itself south towards uh, offshore areas from the Kimberley coastline and then down towards Raleigh Shoals, sea temperatures will be 31, pushing 32 degrees Celsius in places. So plenty of fuel available for this system here. And as such, it is kind of a bad forecast for Western Australia, a small tropical cyclone, which can rapidly intensify quite quickly. It looks like wind shear might be the saving grace here or its land interaction with the WA. We've got to hope that this system does actually hug the coast and go into the Pilbara, uh, into the Kimberley region, because if it goes into the Pilbara, it will likely be a much stronger tropical cyclone and could be quite a big problem course around the Karratha or the Port Hedland area. At this point in time though it's still far too early to tell and as such far too early to panic. Definitely tropical cyclones forming offshore that's for sure because you can see that west coast trough now beginning to develop down the west coast of WA and as such it's pushing those temperatures up. It's a rather warm night especially for this time of the year you can see temperatures through the Perth metro area into the low 20s that is quite warm for this time of the year and a couple of degrees above the average but it is going to be substantially above the average today uh, in terms of those temperatures pushing 35 degrees Celsius across parts of the Perth metro area by uh, lunchtime it is going to get quite warm indeed and probably quite uncomfortable especially for this time of the year i'm completely done with the heat and i think i speak for everybody in perth with temperatures going up towards 35 in the hills that's very much unwelcome at this time of the year and quite a rude surprise presented to us by the west coast trough that's beginning to develop warm temperatures as well high 20s right down towards the south coast and then early 30s pushing high 30s through parts of the weed belt especially towards the northern parts of the weed belt we tickling high 30s or even early 40s for some locations and not unseasonable heat for this time of the year but certainly warmer than what we would like and warmer than what we would expect, especially for this time of the year. Interesting stuff on the forecast modeling and certainly something worth keeping an eye on throughout the course of today. Uh, warm and dry across the southwest of Western Australia before rain returns by the looks of things as we get out towards next week. Uh, let's talk about something a bit different over uh, in the eastern states. You can see rainfall now beginning to pipe itself up across the northeastern coast of New South Wales and into the southeast of Queensland. And showers over the next couple of days are expected to jump a healthy drop of rainfall here and there across the northeast of New South Wales, especially for locations north of Yabba up towards Lismore and Mara Willemba and up towards Cape Byron. Rainfall accumulations offshore there could be anywhere between 50 and to about 100 millimetres and you can see those showers piping up because of that high pressure ridge that's developing over into the Tasman Sea really built itself quite nicely over New Zealand and you can see it on the satellite imagery right now it's providing some very cool calm and stable conditions over New Zealand and some pretty calm and stable conditions over into the Tasman Sea as well very calm conditions along the New South Wales coastline in stark contrast to what they've had for the last couple of weeks where it has been quite windy and quite swirly. Those showers now beginning to build offshore and you can see they're nothing crazy but those bands of showers are going to bring some
some pesky weather into the New South Wales and the Queensland coastline. You can see they pick up throughout the course of today for locations between Kempsey up towards Lucemore and then between Lucemore uh, up towards the Gold Coast and Brisbane through tomorrow morning and into tomorrow afternoon. Heavier showers can be expected around the Lucemore, the Cape Byron and the Gold Coast area easing off through Sunday morning. A couple of showers still expected here and there streaming through Sunday morning into Sunday night for the Gold Coast and into the Sunshine Coast even but nothing too much in the way of significant rainfall accumulations and you can see they're pretty quick to disappear as well through Monday and Tuesday next week before some much cooler calmer and dry conditions to take place for pretty much a week straight across the northeast of New South Wales. Certainly looking at a more calmer picture as like I said what we've seen over the last couple of weeks out towards the last month or so where it has been rather turbulent over into the Tasman Sea. Rainfall accumulations like we have set are looking relatively healthy and you can see here out towards Monday and Tuesday rainfall accumulations throughout the next five days. Even down towards Coffs Harbour we're looking at up to about 80 or 90 millimetres on the forecast models and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw five day rainfall accumulations beginning now up to 150 millimetres and that's not enough rainfall to cause flooding problems but it does go to show that a couple of good drops of rainfall over a couple of consecutive days really can add up and these rain gauges up in New South Wales are pretty quick to feel at the best of times so as such we'll likely be seeing some pretty good rainfall accumulations especially south of Coffs Harbour through Ebor and the Namuka Heads area and then heading inland out towards Dorigo as well some good rainfall can be expected through the watersheds out there plenty of good contributions expected of the rivers as we get later on into their wet season down there it is definitely peak time for rainfall at this point in time for this part of New South Wales so the rainfall does come as no surprise and again it is not expected to be problematic so don't take it as a forecast that's expected to be problematic another interesting part of the forecast as well is just these temperatures they're really expected to drop over the next couple of uh, weeks as well and that's typical for this time of the year but you can see again overnight we have had temperatures closer to zero once again through New South Wales and Victoria and those temperatures are expected to get down again through Saturday morning into Sunday morning this weekend. It will be a little bit warmer on Sunday and in fact some warmer temperatures are actually expected as we get that northeasterly flow out of New South Wales bringing in the warmer temperatures down from the northeast and we could be seeing temperatures into the mid 30s uh, across parts of New South Wales and South Australia through the uh, afternoon and evening and even into the low to mid 30s across Victoria as well before a cold front sweeps up on Monday and replaces those temperatures with a much cooler uh, kind of blow through I guess and then those temperatures dropping again for Tuesday and Wednesday next week. So the wintry changes just around the corner for New South Wales, Victoria and down towards Tasmania as well and you can see on those rainfall accumulations maps some much needed rainfall now beginning to build on the forecast modelling especially for Tasmania but also for Victoria and up towards South Australia as well. So overall a pretty good forecast for Tasmania but it's just not enough rainfall and still too much heat and dry conditions for Victoria and South Australia at this point in time. Anyways that is all that I have time for in today's weather forecast update. If you have enjoyed it then please do let me know in the comment section down below. Give me some feedback or some suggestions in the comment section down below as well and of course a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and again I could not run the show without them. Their support is much appreciated as well. But that is all for me today. Have a great Friday and have a great weekend and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.